Camels, duels, and failed bank robberies. The wild, wild west was a wild, wild time. Sure it was. That's why for today's list, we'll be counting down our top 10 unusual wild, wild west stories that will make your head spin. Kicking off the list at number 10, medicine shows. Nowadays, medical shows are fascinating. Dr. Pimple Popper, I can weirdly watch that all day. There's something about animal rescues, home renovations, or chiropractic adjustments, you know, I can never be born. So back in the wild, wild west, the 1860s to the 1890s, they had medicinal showmen. Yeah, these guys would go town to town, of course, selling elixirs and tonics, but they would really nail this pitch. They would have pawns run ahead and plant themselves in the audience for these random medicine shows. That way, when the world's greatest showman doctor arrives, he randomly picks an ill patient, and then boom, just like that, they would be Cured. One of the most successful of these elixirs was an elixir made by Kickapoo Indian Medicines from John Healy and Charles Bigelow. It was a mixture of herbs, roots, and animal fat, said to treat any illness, but really it was more of just a laxative, so you were just in the bush and hoping it got better. Number nine, hop on my camel, partner. When you think of the Old West, you think long open ranges, spurs on boots, and cowboys riding camels? That's right, in 1855, the United States Army decided to import 75 camels to Texas. After all, the terrain in the Old West was fairly similar to the Middle East. The camels made supply runs between Camp Verde and San Antonio, but trouble began when the American Civil War broke out. Eventually, the camels were sold off or simply let go into the wild where they multiplied and began to cause havoc. So much so that folks began to spin urban legends, such as the Red Ghost, a 30 foot tall creature that made people quiver in their britches. When in reality, most people had never seen a camel before, and it was just a feral camel wandering the desert. But I mean, who knows? If Star Wars had a 30 foot camel in the snow, what's to say there isn't one running around in the American desert? Number eight, missing mines. There's billions of dollars worth of gold lost at the bottom of the sea. It's there right now, waiting for you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. But if you don't have goggles, maybe swimming just isn't your thing. No sweat. Try the West. Yeah, there's dozens of lost treasure troves hidden in mines still to this day, like the San Saba gold mine or the wheelbarrow mine. There's a few we have heard from in literature from old maps, but none compared to the lost Dutchman mine. The legend has it that a man named Jacob Waltz, a German prospector, found the richest gold mine in the world. That's what he told his friends. And would we ever lie to our friends about gold and the location for it? No, absolutely not. The first gold rush was back in 1799. A young man named Conrad Reed found this yellow rock, had no idea what it was, and for years, he and his father used it as a doorstopper. Yeah, they used a 17 pound gold nugget as a doorstopper, nice. Back then, this information was game changing once they realized that it was, you know, gold. So Congress then built the Charlotte Mint just so they could handle all this incoming gold found in North Carolina right afterwards. I just wouldn't have told anybody. I'd be like, is this an affinity stone? I'm just gonna pocket this and then head out east. Head out east. Number seven, Sideshow Crook. Elmer McCurdy was no different in life than any other bandit at the time. What makes McCurdy so unique is in his afterlife. McCurdy met his end on October 7th, 1911, after local sheriffs tracked him down from a botched robbery. McCurdy was taken to an undertaker and prepared for burial. Unfortunately, no one came to claim the lonesome bandit. Not getting paid for his services, the undertaker began to display McCurdy as a sideshow attraction, charging patrons a nickel to view the bandit. The attraction became popular enough to draw the attention of carnival promoters, who offered multiple times a the mummified crook, but were all denied. As the years went on, McCurdy changed hands from multiple sideshow attractions and museums. One day in 1976, a film crew was setting up props for a filming. When someone began to move what they thought was a wax mannequin, it actually turned out to be poor old Elmer McCurdy himself. Eventually, McCurdy was laid to rest in a grave where two feet of concrete were poured over his casket to make sure no one would come to steal the sideshow crook. Stay in the hole, partner. Number six, cowboys and aliens. Long before the Roswell incident in New Mexico back in 1947, aliens might have actually visited us. Yeah, the report comes from 1896 from two men in California. They reported that three alien beings were trying to abduct them. Were these just cowboy pranksters? Maybe they had a few shots of whiskey from the saloon? No, one of them was a colonel. Colonel H.G. Shaw and Camille Spooner were going from the town of Lodi to the Fresno Citrus Fair, which honestly sounds like a wonderful time, just saying that. But on route, they were greeted by seven foot tall, slender, aliens. 
Yeah, the aliens didn't end up taking the two men because they were too heavy. These aliens were too thin and weak. Legit, that was the reason. They just couldn't grab them and take off. So they got back into their spaceship and they took off. How embarrassing is that? Hit the gym, E.T. Number five, Romeo and Juliet. What's it a name that which we call a rose? Any other word would smell as sweet? It's often said that art imitates life, but sometimes life can be stranger than fiction and oftentimes really similar. The Hatfield and McCoys were two feuding families in the time of the Old West, whose hatred of one another Another runs deep. The most serious issues being family members removed, Old West style, by the opposite family. And in one case, a court battle over the ownership of a barnyard pig. But perhaps the best story to come of this feud is the love affair of John C. Hatfield and Rosanna McCoy. The two lovers met and instantly fell in love with each other, their families instantly disapproving of their newfound love. Similar to William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, the star-crossed lover's story ends in tragedy. After multiple attempts to rekindle their love, including a daring rescue organized by Rosanna to free Johnsey from her own family, their love never re-sparked, and Johnsey went on to marry her cousin. It's said that poor Rosanna died of a broken heart. He loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves my cousin? Number four, bank robberies. If you're going to parody the wild, wild west, you need a horse, you need a hat, and you need a big sack with a dollar sign on it. Apparently, wasn't it like Bandit Central? Weren't there bank robberies on every dusty corner in every dusty old town? Uh, no, there actually was very little, in fact. Bank robberies didn't happen that often back then. In fact, during the Wild West era, officially declared from 1865 to 1900, there were only eight bank robberies in total. Put that in perspective, in 2017 alone, there were around 4,000 bank robberies in the United States. So it got a lot worse after the Wild Wild West. Now we're on like wild, 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 it's like 17 wilds at this point. The first armed robbery ever in history was done by famous outlaw, you may have heard of them, Jesse James and his brother Frank. This was in 1866. The gang of outlaws robbed the Clay County Savings Association in Liberty, Missouri. We know all these bandits, but it's like, they're just, they're just robbers, they're just bad people, we shouldn't really know them, or glorify them. But they do this, pew, 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 and ride horses, so it's kind of fun. And the number three spot, Good Bad Town. On your way out west, you may come to find that the unsettled lands are full of danger, bandits, crooks, perilous weather, and the occasional tummy ache. When the town of Palisade, Nevada's railroad was expanded and people began to arrive in droves, the town boomed, but so did their boredom. Palisade was rather mild compared to the rest of the expanding west, so much so that when tourists began to complain of Palisade being nothing like the dangerous towns they read about in their dime novels, the people of Palisade acted by staging fake bank robberies, gunfights, and even Native American battles between them and the army, with sometimes the Native Americans participating. Also going as far as using real cattle blood during the stage combat. The citizens of Palisade were such effective actors that a lot of tourists began to run back to the train in fear of what they were seeing. Nothing more American than capitalizing on boredom. Number two, Helena Duels. Have you guys heard of Helena Duels? They're pretty intense. They're a bit more intense than breakdancing battles, which honestly, it's pretty close, but these are like right above it. Helena Duels began, of course, in Helena, Texas, AKA the toughest town on earth. At least that's what they called it back in the late 1800s. It still is pretty close. The Helena Duel began here. There's even a movie called The Duel with Woody Harrelson and Liam Hemsworth. They showed this style of combat in a pretty brutal cinematic way. Opponents' left hands were tied together with buckskin and each were given a small little blade. It had to be short enough so you couldn't reach any vital organ. That was the trick. It was a brutal detail that made this an unusual event. But just like the Romans and the Colosseum, everybody likes watching violence. Depending what era it is, people are like, yeah, we'll still show up and watch people die. Sure. People People would make bets during these duels. How did anybody watch these at all? I can't even scroll through Reddit at night without seeing something awful, let alone a Helena duel at like 4 p.m. And the number one spot. I don't like your snoring, partner. There were a handful of dangerous criminals back in the Wild West. This includes John Wesley Harden. Born to a reverend in 1853, his parents hoped he would grow up to be a preacher. He turned out to be one of the most deadliest outlaws to ever live. Harden claimed many lives over the years, but most bizarre was when he shot a man for snoring. One night in 1871, while staying at a hotel, Harden was having trouble sleeping due to the man in the next room snoring loudly. Harden promptly shouted at the man to stop snoring. Irritated with no response, he fired several shots into the next room, claiming the man's life. After years of being an outlaw and spending a lot of time in jail, he was released for good behavior, where he then received a full pardon. With his full pardon, Harden was unable to take and pass the bar exam, afterwards setting up a law practice in Gonzales County, Texas. If your lawyer has a longer criminal history than you, there's a good chance you're not gonna beat the case. Guys, those were a top 10 unusual wild, wild west stories that will make your head spin. Those were absolutely insane. So if you liked that video, hit the thumbs up, you know the drill. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. And I've been your new host, Andrew Castlingay. We'll see you next time on Bumblebee. Peace. Camels, duels, and fang, 
Thanks. No. We're, I, who wrote that? Me. Like, ugh.